Ladies and gentlemen, we are playtesting the Totemic Restoration Shaman on the War Within beta and unfortunately it's not as cool as we initially thought it's going to be, the reasons why are coming up next. The main gameplay changer, the Surging Totem, is as cool as it sounds. It replaces Healing Rain, it's instant cast, there's no aiming and there's no downtime. It will even relocate the healing rain for you if it needs to be relocated. Pressing that button feels like a huge win only until it actually works correctly. Quite often it will decide to put the healing rain somewhere and that somewhere happens to be exactly where you don't want it to be. Obviously that doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens it feels really bad because you're doing no healing and no damage with your healing reins. I tried to adjust to this by standing in melee trying to force the healing reins to be on top of me, the tank and the mobs and that would work sometimes, but not always and I can easily see a coordinated group having no problems with that because everybody will know where to stay and how to stack, but this is going to be a nightmare in Pux, no doubt about that, we've all played preservation evoker with a mage and a hunter in your group. If your pug is range heavy, by default these people have no idea where to stand, what's left for standing in melee so you can actually bait the surging totem on top of the mobs. I also had a lot of problems with tank moving the mobs and me dropping the totem way too early while he's still gathering the pool. In those situations the healing reins would just lag behind and always be not up to where they need to be. And it is early days, there's hope that probably the totem is going to become smarter and drop the healing reins at better locations in the future. But so far in the runs that I had, I definitely did not have much fun trying to bait the healing reins and then getting angry because they drop in Narnia. As I said though, once that happens it feels really really good and in my opinion I think it would be fine if they actually let us aim the totem, drop it into a certain location and then maybe even allow us to relocate it even if you don't have the totemic recall talent available. That would basically solve all the problems and it would actually make it feel more like a totem because right now it's a button that you press and you forget about it and it doesn't feel like the rest of the totems that you either have to aim or there's some kind of interaction with it where you pump heals into it and of course there are exceptions but I think you get the point. And lastly let me also mention that I don't think this is going to be much better in raid. If everybody is stacked yes then it's going to be amazing. But if there is a little bit of spreading, judging by how so far the totem makes its decisions, it's going to be hit and miss again and if you cannot min max it, you'll probably just lean to the other hero talent tree which is much more reliable. Other than the surging totem, there are a few other hero talents that actually complement the spec quite nicely. You get a free chain heals casted every time you summon a totem which definitely feels quite nice, the chain heals themselves jump additional times to heal for more and your cloud burst store even more healing than before making them even more powerful. All these talents are passive, they give you extra HPS just so the spec can actually be competitive with the farseer as the extra healing that you get from the healing reins of the surging totem are just not going to be enough. And while those hero talent nodes actually feel good, there are others that actually feel a little bit like a miss. There's a double selection node that is kinda dubious, as the first option increases the radius of your totems and the health of them. That could probably be useful for Erdenwald totem in raid, but increasing the radius is actually not as good as you think it would be. If you're playing this in a dungeon, there is no totem that radius is big enough to actually encompass both your hunter and your mage in a 5 man party. And if you're in a raid, everybody is stacked anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. The other option reduces the cooldown of some of your totems and that could be useful for let's say poison cleansing totem on afflicted week. But outside of that, that also feels kinda like a wasted node that you're definitely not gonna be using in raid and has limited usages in Mythic Plus. And it doesn't get better as we reach a node that is completely dead to Restoration Shaman. 
There's no choice here, it's just to note that Sass increases the duration of your Earth Living Weapon effect by 6 seconds. Now, I understand we share this tree with Enhancement Shamans who have a lot of weapon imbue value, but that's just not true for Rastro Shaman. Right now, I'm not even picking Earth Living Weapon in Raid, what's left for Mythic Plus where that's never been an option at all. This talent is basically forcing you to pick Earth Living Weapon on the Rastro Shaman talent tree, and that simply means that you're going to lose value elsewhere because you're going to have to free up a talent point for it. I thought there could be a small saving grace because of the last node that you have on the hero talent tree called Whirling Elements. This one gives you 3 buffs once you use your Surging Totem and one of them applies Earth Living Weapon to every target that you heal with your Chain Heal. In order for that to happen you don't need to have Earth Living Weapon talented and it actually works, but the duration of that Earth Living buff is actually the original 18 seconds and it's not increased by those 6 seconds promised by the Imbuement Mastery. So, long story short, you can actually play with 9 hero talents by just dropping the Imbuement Mastery altogether and it's not going to make a difference as the other option is to actually make changes to your Shaman talent tree which also doesn't feel nice, especially in Metic Plus. On top of buffing your chain heal, the whirling elements also buffs your next healing wave or healing surge and reduces the cast time of your next healing spell. And although that sounds cool, keep in mind that the tier set is going to buff your tidal waves and make them more effective, which means that your chain heals are going to be so fast that you have to wait for your GCD to come back off of cooldown so you can continue casting. That's not necessarily a good thing and another thing to mention is that the Farseer Shaman has a much better synergy with the tier set as it has a talent that allows the tidal waves to stack up to 4 times and all the things that the tier set does revolve around tidal waves. And having said that, that's just another reason to pick Farseer Shaman on top of Totemic. Last but not least, let's mention another interesting hero talent. This one comes in a note, you can either choose to make your Surging Totem more powerful or you can select a talent that allows you to imbue your shield for one hour, increasing your overall healing done and extending the duration of your healing stream and cloud burst totems. That sounds like a lot of fun because not only you're going to be doing more healing, but one of your most powerful spells, the totems, are going to be even bigger. That's going to allow us to do even more ridiculous cloud burst totems in raids, but it comes at a cost you are not allowed to use two handers anymore because this imbue goes only on shields. That of course should not be a big deal unless there are some overpowered staffs like we saw at the end of this expansion. So, in conclusion, I'm going to say that Totemic Shaman feels quite nice to play, but it's all dependent on the placement of the healing reins. If that works correctly, it's amazing, if it doesn't work, it doesn't feel good at all. Right now, it's a bit of a hit and miss, so if that stays like that, I would easily see how everybody's going to lean towards Farseer Shaman a little bit more, but it's also still early days, so we'll see how everything shapes up to be. Check my channel for review of the Farseer Restoration Hero Talent review as well and stay subscribed as I have more hero talents coming up for the rest of the healing classes. And probably some DPS as well, let's go enhancement. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, now get out of here.